Hi, and welcome back to Cooking with Sunny. I've spent the last 15 years working in over a dozen professional kitchens all around the world, and I'm here to share everything I've learned with you. Let's get started. I'm going to start by peeling our potatoes. I like to take a tiny bit off the top and bottom just so I can grab an edge. So, easiest thing to do, just quarter your potatoes. Most important thing is they're all the same size. So however you cut them, just make sure you're not doing them all differently. I've got a quick tip for you about choosing potatoes. When you're in the supermarket, doesn't matter if it's a russet potato, gold potato, whatever, you choose the hardest potato you can find. You want that thing to be solid like a rock. If your potato gives when you press it, gives in a little bit, it is a bad potato. It's going to be gummy, it's going to be gross, it's not going to be good for anything. So always choose a hard potato. So guys, here's a little trick with potatoes. Rinse them once and dump off the excess water. What you want to do is rinse any excess starch off of the potato. You don't want to end up with something gluey. So rinse them two, maybe three times. You want to see clear water before you start cooking them. So we're just going to peel our carrots. Guys, another tip when you're cooking, the biggest mistake I see a lot of amateur cooks and even professional chefs make is they turn the pan on and they put the oil in and they start trying to cook too soon. This pan has been on full blast for five minutes. It's hot. Now we add our oil. And then and only then do we start cooking. Add your oil, wait another minute, then you put your beef in. You have to do it. You hear that? Listen. If you don't hear that, something's wrong. A little note on the beef, guys. Go for 20% fat. You can use 90-10 if you want, but if you're asking me, I'm always going 80-20. Now, generous amount of Malden salt or whatever you have, kosher is good, sea salt's good, fresh cracked pepper. Don't hold back on the pepper. So once your carrots are peeled, just take the top off in half. Careful when you do this. Do whatever shape you want when you're cutting your carrots. I like to take my flat piece, do a bias. I don't know, something interesting. All right, guys, let's start with our vegetables for the shepherd's pie. Now I'm going to start with what takes longest to cook, in this case, the carrots. In the pan, that pan's ripping hot. A little salt and pepper. Remember, sound is important when you're cooking. Get a little color on these, a little toss. Nice. Okay, we're going to go keep going. Now we're going in with our leeks. Keep that heat on high. All right, guys, I'm going to use one shallot as, long, as well as the leek. Nice thin slices. I'm going to leave them whole. I like to know that this is a shallot. Drop your shallots in along with your leeks. Beautiful. Give it a nice little toss. The celery. I'm going to chop your stalks in half. Don't want to go too small with the celery. Cut some nice sized little pieces. You're using your pinky and your thumb to hold it together while your middle finger or your index finger guides the knife. We use this technique for a lot of vegetables. Add your celery last. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Just roll your sage up a little bit. With sage, I only like to chop it once. So try to go thin on your first chop. So try to chop your sage thinly the first time. Nice and rolled up. If you chop sage too much, it's gonna get 
brown and dirty. So one should do straight into the beef. Time, we're just gonna drop in and pull out before we assemble the pie. Rosemary, try to ball it up, roll it over itself, push it down with your fingers. My goal with herbs is always try to just chop them once. Sometimes with these hard herbs like rosemary, you're gonna have to run through it again, and that's okay. Rosemary straight in. Give that a stir. We're gonna be using some tomato paste in here. I'm born in England. I say tomato. You say tomato. We're all friends. Add your tomato paste. Gonna add a little bit of acidity and help hold all the beef together. And some beautiful color as well. Remember when you're using tomato paste, let it dry out on the bottom of the pan. It has a tinge to it that's not that nice when it comes out of the pan. But as it hits the dry heat and toasts, the flavor totally changes. Really important. Now that our tomato paste is cooked down, it's gotten to know the beef, the flavors are working, we're going to add a few cups of water. I'm going to add a little bit of beef base to this. You can love me or hate me for it, but we don't all have a lot of time on our hands, and that's including me, and I really like this product. A tablespoon or so will do. Just going to add some richness. Now that the time has done its job, no need for it in there anymore. Pick it out. You don't want to chew on that. Okay, guys, now use whatever dish you're going to use. Get your beef base on the bottom. Now spread it out evenly along the bottom. Beautiful. Next thing you want to do is cool this down. So we just strained our potatoes. Now we're going for the next step. To the same pan we cooked the potatoes in, we're going to add our cream and butter. Just melt that over low heat. Next step here is going to be to rice our potatoes on the finest setting you have on your ricer. Just straight into your pot with cream and butter. Guys, if you don't have a ricer, a hand masher works. If you don't have that, well, you should probably get one, but use a whisk. That'll do. Good amount of salt. Straight in your mash. Don't hold back. Don't underseason things. It's a crime. Next step, I let my potatoes cool down for about 10 minutes outside in my blast cooler. Add two egg yolks. I have four in this bowl, but I'm taking two out. I'm saving one, two more for the top of the pie. Work those in quickly. Make sure your mash isn't too hot when you do this, or you're going to cook the eggs. This is going to help give the top of the pie some great color. So that's been outside for 20 minutes. Next step, get your mash on. Just pour. You can do much, as much or as little as you want. That looks good to me. Spread it out. Just try to make it nice and even. Back outside. So I've had this outside for about 10 minutes, just to cool it off a bit. Now I have some egg yolk here, the two you reserved. Just brush it slightly. This is going to give some beautiful color on top. The longer you let this set outside, the easier it's going to be. Take a little fork, bowl of water. It's just going to help the fork not stick to the potatoes. You can make a lot of patterns on shepherd pie, but I just go for a fork. I like it. Give it some texture on top. It's going to help get some brown, crispy bits. Beautiful. Some nice salt on top. Last step, we're going to bake at 400, 25, 30 minutes. All right, so shepherd's pie is complete. Now guys, I would love to do a tasting of this, but there is a family in Aspen waiting for this, and I'm, I'm running a little late. So have this alongside your veggies. It's going to be a beautiful meal. And please, guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. I'll see you next week.